Hello, it's Thursday. So following on from the 24 hour challenge last week, we are going to be making Evie this week. Now I have made another one in her shiny colors and she comes out really tiny and really cute. I think that this is the perfect size kind of for a keychain or something like that. But before we go into her, I do just want to also say some of you are very, very concerned about Espeon's ears. And I just want to let you know that she does have them now. She just didn't in time for upload last Thursday. It isn't too late to vote for her instead of Vaporeon for the other evolution that I end up doing. Okay, just, just dropping that in there. Okay, so for today's project, you're going to need 8-ply 100% acrylic yarn in three main colours. So you're going to need a white or a cream, as well as a soft brown or pale orange, and either a dark brown or a black for just inside the ears. You're also going to need a pair of 9mm safety eyes, your 3.5mm hook, pins and needles, scissors, and some stuffing. And I'm just going to be using the breakage from when we made Flareon the other day. But that's it. Okay, so to make our little Evie, we're going to start by making the little head and body potato. So we're gonna start in the middle of the head and then we're going to be working down and we finish off underneath. So we're gonna start by grabbing our brown. We're just gonna work the first couple of rows to build up to 18 stitches around. So just like that, we've got this tiny little circle worked up that's 18 stitches around. And then we're just gonna work three rows of 18 single crochet around to give us a little bit of height. So there we have the top part of her little head. So in the next couple of rows, we're working a lot of different increases and decreases spaced very strangely. And that's because we're going to be working up the curve of the back so that we're going to extend out this way, as well as a little bit of a bulge for the snout and then close in under the chin. So we've got a few things structurally happening, which is why these rows look a little bit more chaotic. So this is just a reminder that when you encounter rows with multiple sets of brackets in them, you read the row from left to right just the way you would any other sentence and you complete the instructions one step at a time. So if you encounter a set of brackets, you complete the brackets however many times listed before moving on to the next step. So in row eight, we're gonna be working our first lot of decreases to start pulling in the underside of the head. So I thought I'd just stop and show you how I do both decreases and what I used to call decrease threes, but I am now updating my notation to label them instead, single crochet three together. So you'll note that change in the notes. So I always use invisible decreases where I can, um, just because I think that they give you a nice flat appearance on your final piece instead of those little bulges that I've heard you guys talk about sometimes. So how you work an invisible decrease is you insert your hook through the front loop only of the stitches that you're decreasing. So for this standard decrease, that means it's across two stitches. I've inserted my hook through the front loop only of two of them. I'm gonna yarn over and pull up a loop through both of those stitches and then yarn over and complete my stitch. So that's my invisible decrease there. Now in this row, we then work five single crochet, like so. And then I have a single crochet three together, or what I used to call a decrease three. So we can actually do those invisibly as well. And all I do is I insert my hook into the front loops of the next three stitches, just like so. Yarn over and pull through all three, and then yarn over and complete the stitch. And that should give you a really nice invisible decrease there as well. So now we're just gonna continue working that row. Now in the second half of that row, we encounter some increases. And I know we've done quite a few of those already, but while I'm just handing out little lessons, I also use invisible increases in all of my work. So, so a standard increase is of course, just inserting two stitches into the same stitch. So what you want to do when you're working an invisible increase is you want to work the first of those single crochets through just the front loop of the stitch, like so, and then work the second one through both loops. And you'll find that that minimizes the appearance of that little hole you can otherwise sometimes get. So yeah, I, I always tend to use the invisible variations of the stitches where I can. And there's the end of that row. So that's what we look like there. So at this point, we are just gonna stop and insert our eyes, largely because we can already tell from the appearance of this like duck bill kind of fan where the back is going to be, which means that we know where the face is going to be as well. So I'm gonna grab my headpiece, I'm gonna grab my eyes, and I'm gonna count five rows down. So one, two, three, four, and five. And I'm gonna insert my eye in the side of the head, just like that. So if you flatten it out with the, the back at the back, it's roughly where you want that eye, though do use your best judgment when positioning them. And then 
we should have five stitches between the gap I inserted this eye in and the gap where I'm going to insert my other eye. So one, two, three, four, and five. Now you can wait to snap the backs on until you've curved the rest of the head under, which will happen in the next couple of rows. That's not a big deal. I'm just going to snap mine on now and we'll see if I've made a huge error in judgment. I'm afraid there's no good clicky noises from these particular eyes because the plastic backs are too soft. So now we're just going to work up the next six rows to finish off the body potato, making sure to stuff as we go. And finish off. Now whenever I finish a piece like this, I'm left with this little opening that's six stitches around. And what I just do is I take my tail and I weave it through the front loop only of the remaining stitches. So, and then just pull it tight. It works like a drawstring bag or a reverse magic ring. Inverse magic ring. And just tuck that end away. So there is the tiny potato that will form our Eevee. So next up we're going to be making her little front paws. So what we do is we start at the base of the foot and then we're basically just going to work a couple of rows to form the trunk of the leg. Now there is no difference here between left and right so you just need to make two exactly the same. So just like that and we're not stuffing either of these little pieces but we will just tuck both of these tails down inside just to help it hold its shape a little bit. So there we go there are the two tiny little front feet. I'm going to pop those to one side with the body potato. So now we're just going to form the back legs basically the same way but there are a few more increases and decreases thrown in to help form the shape. So they start exactly the same way as the front legs for the first three rows. And then we're going to build in sort of the, the elbow that happens at the back. So we start by going single crochet and then an increase and then a single crochet and then a decrease. And so the number of stitches total in the round stays at five. But what this is actually going to be doing is build up this bend in the leg. You'll see that effect come into play more with the larger evolutions. But on this smaller one, this is just sort of planting that sort of subtle hint that there should be a shape of a leg there. So that's the shape we currently have and now we just need to build up a little bit of a haunch because you'll note on our Eevee that the, the leg actually goes most of the way up the back so we need to build up that part of the leg and we're just going to do that over the next four rows. So we're not stuffing this piece we're just going to finish off. And of course you need to make two of them and pop those to one side as well. Okay so with the head, body and limbs made we're going to move on to the ears. So the ears on your Eevee are made in two pieces. So we have this dark inner ear and then we make a second piece in our main body colour and join them together by stitching around the edge between the two of them. So you're going to grab either your dark brown or your black and that's what we're going to work with first. So I have this just scrappy bit of dark brown that I'm using. And for this piece, we're going to be working around a chain. So start by chaining seven. The fun thing about these ears is that we're gonna be using the exact same techniques on all of the larger evolutions, just in a larger size. So this is good practice. So there is my seven stitches. And I'm gonna turn and starting in the second chain from my hook, I'm going to work two slip stitches, then three single crochet. And then in the final chain, we're going to work four single crochet and we're going to do that to turn our piece. So that's basically the same as working two this way and turning our work and working two again. So there we go. So we've got four in that end chain. We're now gonna continue working up the back of those same chains. So we're going to work three single crochet 
and then two slip stitches and finish off. And you are going to want to prep two of those. Then grab your main body colour. And we're once again going to start with a chain of seven, just like so. We are again going to turn, starting in our second chain from our hook. So not this first one, that's our turning chain, starting in the second one. We're going to work five single crochet down the side of that chain. Which should leave us with one chain left at the end. And we're going to once again work four single crochet into it to turn our piece. And then work five single crochet up the other side. This time we're not going to finish off however when we reach out our top point. Instead what we're going to do is grab one of the inner ear pieces we've made and we're going to lay it on top so that our finishing off point on our inner ear piece matches up with the active stitch we currently have. Then we're just going to work single crochet around the edge, working through both layers. So with four loops on my hook, we're going to work 14 single crochet around. So there's still a couple of stitches to go, but I'm just going to take a second to tuck my tails in just because this is the easiest possible time to do it. While there's still that little opening to just shove them on down inside. So that's our edge formed nicely. But then you'll note that the tips of Evie's ears are meant to be pointy. So all we're gonna do to encourage that is we're going to skip that first stitch that we did through both layers, which should form the top of the ear. And we're just gonna slip stitch through the next one. And finish off. And that should encourage that pointy tip to the ear. I'm now gonna just tuck this extra tail down between the two layers so that we can't see it. There we go. And we're just going to do the same thing to the other one now. Okay, and there are her little ears. So we're going to pop those to one side as well. So now there are just two pieces remaining. We've got her neck floofs and we have her tail. So we're actually going to do her neck floofs now. And this is the original that I made during the 24 hour challenge. And this is the shiny version that I've made since then. And you note that I've made the floofs a little bit bigger. I think I mentioned during the challenge that this, these ones here didn't really fit around her neck properly and that I was going to have to revisit it. Well, I remembered. So we're going to be making these neck floofs today. We actually make these all along the same foundation chain and we split it into four sections. And you'll understand what I mean in a moment. So grab your cream or your white and you need to chain 20. Just like so. So there is our 20. Now that should fit to wrap comfortably around the neck of your Eevee piece with just one or two chains to overlap. So that's intentional. Once we work into these chains, it'll sort of shrink up on you faster than you can imagine. And what we're going to do is start by creating the first floof. So we're going to turn and starting in our second chain from our hook, we're going to work four single crochet across. Just like so. We are then going to turn our whole chain so that we are working back into the back of those chains that we just worked into and we're going to work four single crochet back to our starting point. See what we did there? We now have this row of eight single crochet that we're going to work around as a round. Now just because of the way this piece works I find that I end up working on the wrong side of the piece. So normally my, my hook would be inserting into the side closest to me and currently it's inserting in the side away from me. If that's going to bother you to do, what you can do is chain one and turn, which will correct your orientation, but I'm just gonna keep working in a spiral for now. So that chain one and turn won't be necessary after the end of this row. So I'm then gonna just, as I mentioned, work this as a round. So my next stitch goes into the first single crochet that we did and I'm going to be working two repeats of an increase and then three single crochet. And then two repeats of a decrease and then three single crochet. And at this point you can stop and stuff it just a little bit, tuck a little bit of stuffing in there. 
And then we're gonna work the final row, which is two repeats of a decrease and then two single crochet, and then finish off. So just like with any piece, I'm gonna weave that tail through the remaining stitches and pull it tight to close off that little opening. So what we've made there is one of her side floofs. So that will fall on the side of the head like that. So the next one we're gonna make is this front one, which is a bigger one. So join your yarn to your hook with a slip knot and making sure that you've oriented your stitches so that they are facing upwards. So there is a backside to a chain, of course, and we're going to wanna to make it so that the floof is facing downwards so that we're looking at the correct side of the chain and attaching to the first chain loop after that floof. So it's this one here, there is the floof. This is the chain we're attaching into. We're going to work six single crochet along that foundation chain. Like so, we are then turning the chain again and once again working in the backs of the chains we just worked into we're going to work six single crochet back along like so so there is our round of 12 stitches and we're just going to finish working those up just like we did with the first one just like that and we are once again going to reattach in the next chain and work another spike exactly the same as that first one. So working four single crochet, turning, and then four single crochet back. Just like that. So there we have the main front floof and the two little side floofs. And now we should have five chains left and that's going to create the smallest floof along the back. You may also note that by this point, your chain has sort of twisted a little bit so that it's facing forwards. That's fine, just keep working through the loops as they, they are intended. So we are going to join in the next chain and work five single crochet, which should take us down to the very end. There we go. Then gonna turn and working in those same chains, we're gonna work five single crochet back up. That actually means we've worked two stitches into that end chain to act as our turn. And then just working four more back up to where we started. We are then just going to finish by working the two rows to narrow this down into a triangle. And I recommend not stuffing this one. It sits at the back and you don't want it to be too big. And finish off. So there are our neck floops. And I know they look a bit weird right now, but trust the process. And you can try them on for size if you'd like. Just make sure that your largest one's at the front, your big ones fall at the sides, and then your back one should stretch along the back to meet comfortably on the side. So when we stitch them on, we'll warp them around so that they look right, but that, that is exactly what it should look like at the moment. So pop those to one side as well. And now we just need to make her tail. So for Evie's tail, we start in the main body color and we work up the main bulb to about the halfway point. Then what we do is we swap to our cream or white and we alternate spike stitches and single crochet around that first row just to give us that nice little zigzag and then finish off the shape with our lighter color. So grab your body color now. We're just going to work the first three rows to get up to 18 stitches around. And then two rows of 18 single crochet around. So you'll see there we've worked up the bulb. It's going to form the base of the tail. And now we're just going to start decreasing down into a teardrop shape. So that means that we're going to be working three repeats of four single crochet and then a decrease. which will bring us down to 15 stitches around. And then we're going to work three repeats of three single crochet and a decrease to get us down to 12. But we're gonna to change to our light color in the last stitch of that round. So there we go. I've worked the first 11 stitches of that row and all we have left is our final decrease. So for color changes in any of my patterns, we always want to change to the new color in the stitch before we want that new color to be active, which means we want to change to our cream in this final decrease of the round. So I'm going to start the color change stitch the same way I would any other decrease, in my case, invisible decrease, by picking up the two loops on my hook, yarning over and pulling up a loop. So I should have two loops on my hook. 
I'm then just going to hold that old colour out of the way and grab a strand of the colour I'm changing to, pinching that at the base of the stitch so that the tail trails off in the same direction as my existing colour. Swap my fingers around a little bit there. So there we go. I've got it pinched at the base of the stitch. So I'm just going to yarn over and pull my new colour through my two loops on my hook. Now you note that the stitch is a little bit wibbly wobbly. I'm just going to gently tug on the tails until it settles into place nicely. So what you'll see there is I've got my decrease in my old colour, but my new colour is on my hook, ready to go. So because I am done with this old colour now, what I'm going to do just to secure it in place, is trim it off leaving a little bit of a tail, and making sure that I'm trimming off the right colour. And I'm just going to take these two ends and we're going to tie them in a very gentle double knot. That can just tuck away inside. So now our new colour is all ready to go. So this next row, what we're actually going to be doing is alternating single crochet and spike stitches. Now I think we've done spike stitches here before, but not frequently. So we're just going to go over them again. So we're going to start with a single crochet, just like so. And our next stitch is a spike stitch, which means that instead of working through the loops of the next stitch, we're going to work through the gap in the previous row. Now it doesn't really matter if you go for this one on the right or this one on the left. It even doesn't matter if you want to make a really big one and go two rows down, but basically just instead of inserting your hook through those loops, we're going to insert through the gaps between the stitches of the previous row. I'm going to yarn over and pull up a loop and then yarn over and complete the stitch. So that takes the place of putting a stitch into that next one. You're going to want to be very careful to keep count that you're still only doing 12 stitches as you work around. So there we go. So then we just do a single crochet in the next one. And for this one here, I'm going to go extra long. So I'm going to work two rows down. So yarn over and carefully pulling up a loop. We don't want to pucker the work. We want to make sure it's still sitting flat, but that we're pulling up a nice long loop back to the top of the piece. Yarn over and complete the stitch. So that just gives me a slightly longer triangle. So you can alternate between these smaller spike stitches and these longer spike stitches to give yourself a slightly rougher zigzag. Just make sure that you're alternating with single crochet in between. And we're just going to work around the whole edge like that. So as I mentioned, keep count and make sure you only do 12 stitches because it can sometimes be easier to gain a stitch doing this kind of thing. But you'll see we've got this lovely little zigzag that defines the edge between our two colors now. So now we're just going to continue working in our lighter colour to form the tip of the tail, remembering to stuff as we go. So there is his finished tail. All right, so now we have all of our little Eevee bits. It's time to play a round of Eevee jigsaw puzzle. So we're gonna start by stitching on a little nose at the end of his face, just because that's what I've already got threaded through my needle and I'd rather not thread it twice if I don't have to. So just roughly between the eyes, pick a nice central stitch. and work just a tiny little black loop over the top of it. I don't know, I'm sure you guys are much better at embroidering faces than I am. <laughs> but that, that's about as much as I can manage. So there is Evie's nose. Okay, so next up we're going to do all of her legs at the same time. So move her ears and her fluffy bits cut the way. And you're going to want to grab her front legs. Now these have to be positioned quite low to leave room for her fluffs. But basically what you're going to want to do is line them up straight with the front of her chest so that they're right at the end of her body. We did build in a slight foot shape, so you are going to want to make sure that that's facing forward. It might need a little pinch of encouragement as well. So there are her little front legs. As I mentioned, she does look quite long in the torso this way, but once you add her chest flop in, it all starts making sense. And then her back legs 
we line the top of this sort of thigh bit up with the top of her back. We just curve that piece around the back of her. She's not very big, so it's just a matter of like fitting these pieces in where they go so that her feet are at an even height and that she doesn't wobble backwards and forwards when she moves. If you need a diagram to work from, I suggest looking up the original Eevee concept art just because that's what this whole design was based on. So now that we've done that, the real test is to make sure that her feet are all level. And I'm pretty happy with these ones here, so I'm just going to take some of my body colour and we're going to sew on each of these four legs. Just like that. So, yep, I know she looks funny. <laughs> look at them little butt cheeks. But that's exactly what you want her to look like. Keep in mind that these back legs are supposed to bend under, not stick out straight. Ta-da! So next up we are going to attach her tail. So her tail is going to cover over this mess of a situation that's happening back there. So just plonk the starting magic ring straight down on top of that area, making sure that you leave enough room around her neck to finish attaching her neck fluff. So that's just a couple of pins there and I'm going to grab the neck fluff and just double check that it is going to still fit. And it is. Things can get a little bit squashy when working on something this size, but that's going to fit just nicely. We are now just going to sew this tail on. You can then trim that off and we are going to be attaching her floofs next. So what I'm going to do is I line that main big one up so that it's square under her head and just pin it down on either side. And then on the side with just one triangle I sort of stretch it up and around, pin that edge, it should reach basically to the back of the head, and then finish wrapping it around and once again just pinning in each of the corners. So this is sort of step one and we're going to go around with our cream and just sew it on around this inner edge and then we're going to come back and we're going to sew these ones here down facing towards more of the front to give her a more styled appearance. So you don't have to be too precious with this but just make sure that it is secured the whole way around. So there we go. Now if I take these pins out, it should be firmly attached the whole way around. It's still looking a little bit like a sunflower. So what I'm going to do is we're going to take the point of this main one and we're going to pin it down to the chest. We'll be putting a little stitch in there to hold it. We're going to grab these ones and we're going to stretch them towards the front so that they meet this front one. Put a stitch in there and same thing on the other side. So basically we're going to stitch this one down to the chest and then stitch these two through this main one and that back one is fine on the back where it currently is. So I'm just going to thread my needle through this floof and out near the, near the, the end of the point. Oh good news guys I actually saw these needles in Kmart for like literally three Australian dollars. So yeah they are everywhere now and I highly recommend finding yourself one. Particularly when working on tiny things like this, it just even makes it so much easier. So, there we go. so that's both of those stitched down to our main one. I'm gonna pull that in quite tight so that it actually does the thing. And we're just gonna insert a needle through and oh, that's a bit mean. Um, <laughs> through and out the side, <laughs> just to help hold that main flip in place. There we go. So this one here is probably a little bit more secured than I did with the other ones. You can sort of do what feels right for your Evie. So they're probably a little too tightly attached, if I'm honest. So with these ones here, they're not quite, like I attach them slightly further up, which I think gives them maybe a nicer look. So like, not perfect, but maybe this one here, this Evie here likes to get into the hair gel. That's what, that's what we're going to call it. You can trim off your cream and swap back to your body colour again. The last thing we need to attach now are her ears. So keeping in mind that they have a pointy end and a round end, you want to position the round end at the back of the head, but they don't have to be on evenly, if that makes sense. You can have one pointing off to one side and one pointing straight up in the air. It gives like a cute little curious look, like she's listening to you. There we 
can balance them, balance them, have them both off to the side. Make sure that they are nicely positioned on the head. So there we go. It's kind of like a more quizzical expression. So this one here got a little bit more life to them because I only anchored them in the center. So you can kind of do all kinds of things with these ears. But the main story of this is that you want them to be at the back of the head, vaguely even and not too close together. And then we're just going to sew them on. And there is your finished Eevee. So this is your reminder that the voting is still open for which of the Eevee Lutions you would like to see a video for. The other patterns will just be released in written form, which means that they'll be sent out to my patrons and available in my store for anyone who's interested in those. So currently, as I do this, Vaporeon has a commanding lead. But that's okay. I understand that she's potentially got the most interesting body shape. So I know that it's not, not just, you're not just trolling me or anything like that. But there is still time to vote for one of the others if that's what you would like to see instead. Uh, as for the Leafeon, Glaceon, Sylveon question, I'm thinking about possibly designing those on a live stream. So let me know in the comments if you want to see that.